Well, it's four o'clock. It's Wednesday. I think the key phrase is salutations, kindred spirits. You have to pardon me for just a moment as I do an impromptu unboxing. I was looking for a handkerchief before I started this stream, and well, I guess I get a new one. These are the diamond. These are the diamond cut silks that we offer at Conjure.com. They're for use in thumb tips. Because yeah, I'm gonna talk about. We'll talk about a thumb tip today. We're going to talk about, well, I got a lot of topics to talk about today as I offer what is essentially a mini lecture. This in uh, somewhat preparation for the Society of American Magicians Conventions. I've mentioned it before. I'm going to mention it one last time here. I'm going to be there this weekend. If you don't know, this is your last chance to know, folks. New Orleans, Louisiana is hosting the National Conference of uh, Society of American Magicians. I'll be there at the opening night party giving, uh, you know, a little entertainment and then Monday morning offering my lecture for the peers, for the kindred spirits. The whole schedule's there. You can check the links in the description of this video. They're there for you. And uh, yeah, so I thought, well, you know, a lot of the kindred spirits and hey, some of them are here now. Look, there's Dr. Bob, there's Eddie, Robert. I will see you in New Orleans this weekend. El Bro, what's happening? Chandler and Andy. So yeah, I'll be, uh, <laughs> I'll be in New Orleans this weekend giving my lecture. I lost my train of thought there. And uh, talking about the, uh, oh, hold the phone. I miss Jimmy. And I got to say thanks to CJ for uh, greasing the wheel. We appreciate you. What's up, champion? Besting the Stefan. Ben. Ben is 13, if I'm not mistaken. I might have the wrong Ben there. I'm sure it's Ben. Besting Stefan in the slide off in the Discord the other night. If you're a, if you're a channel member, and if you're not, why not? But if you are, you can join our Discord. If you don't have that information, text me. I'll tell you how to get there. And, uh, yeah, Ben and uh, Stefan had a slide off. And Ben, the 13-year-old, won. That's so cool. All right, so SAM, yeah, I'm giving a lecture. I thought, wow, everyone can't be at the SAM. Maybe some of you would like some of the information that I'm delivering there. And so today we're just going to have a micro, a mini learning session. I'm going to talk a little bit about street performing and a little bit about uh, social media magic and, you know, actually how those two uh, work together. So, yeah, we're going to talk about a little bit of secrets. And, boy, speaking of secrets, uh, secrets, I had this video queued up. I must have watched this video 50 times this week. And, uh, hey, Eddie, what's up, man? Thank you very much for your kind donation, sir. That does help, you know, pay the stream yard bill. That's 50 bucks a month to, to present on this platform, et cetera. Lots of pieces of the puzzle. Anyway, I was saying, I was watching this video and it made me laugh and laugh about magicians and their secrets. Maybe it'll let, make you laugh too. Uh, maybe it'll piss you off. I don't know. Maybe it'll make you mad because some people don't like, you know, these secret discussions. But this will be Chris Ramsey and what happens when you reveal magic secrets. All right, let's watch this. What up, magic fam? Check this out. Whew. Let me show you how that's done. I First, wouldn't you do that if I were you. Sorry, who are you? The name's Bimblebottom. I, sir, just so happen to represent the Secret Society of Magicians, and you, sir, are breaking the rules. Oh, I love those things. Check this out. Uh, this is an appearing cane. You can get it on Wish. And if you use my promo code, you can get it for like a dollar. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Make it a viral video. No, magicians are keepers of secrets. We are meant to keep these secrets forever. Well, that doesn't add up. That doesn't add up. That doesn't add up. How did you learn magic? Well, my, I had a teacher. His name was Leviticus III. He wasn't so good at keeping secrets after all. Well, Whoa. no. I mean. What? Huh? You want a shout out? Is that what you want? You want a shout out? I I would love a shout out, honestly. Like my, it's not going well. Not going well. What up, Magic Fam? Check this out. There's a couple. Let me show you how that's been. I First, you do that if I were you. Sorry. Wouldn't do that if I were you. The name's Bimblebottom. 
Gumball. I, sir, just so happen to represent the Secret Society of Magicians. For me, you, sir, it's this. are breaking the rules. The cane it hits his leg. Oh, I love those things. Check this out. Uh, this is an appearing cane. You can get it on Wish, and if you use my promo code, oh, you get it for like man. a dollar. Hey, what do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? Make it a viral video. You no, know, magicians are keepers of secrets. We're meant to keep years. these secrets forever. Well, that doesn't add up. That doesn't add up. Right. How did you learn maybe magic? I'm just, maybe I'm just uh, amusing myself at this point. But uh, I, I, I kind of, you know, I kind of am taking it upon myself to be one of the ones that bridge the gap between the old school and the modern school as one who is a bit older. You know, I've been around a while. Used to be a naysayer about, you know, teaching on the YouTubes. Until I realized that's where everyone learns now, literally everybody. So what we need is better teachers, not people not teaching. We need better teachers. I'm not going to dwell on that right here, right now, but I am going to do some teaching. And uh, today's, oh, nice to hear that. Always nice to know when I'm in print. I don't get the Penguin Magic Monthly, but that's cool. I'm in there. Awesome. And yeah, you know, size going well. Posted a little clip of him this morning. With uh, maybe I could bring that up later. He was learning, he's learning the mouth coils. Hold on, I got it on my phone. <laughs> I didn't post this to YouTube Shorts. I just put it on my stories for uh, Instagram and Facebook. And hey, it's Instagram at Conjure. Those links are in the description. Here, here's Sai learning the mouth coil. That's gonna be too dark, too bright. Look, go to my Instagram, watch my story. You'll see Cy rolling around with a bunch of mouth coils. He's doing great. Alfie made it. Man, finally made it. Alfie, what's happening? <clears throat> All right, so as I was saying, lecture time at SAM. You guys get a mini lecture today. And I should note that someone today, one of the live viewers, is going to win a lecture package. You know, when I do these lectures for the societies, for the magic clubs, I always bring some things to sell because honestly, this is how we make money because rarely are the professionals paid a reasonable amount of bucks to appear at these things. And that's fine. I understand the conventions can't afford to pay us, you know, regular wages. So we sell things. These are the things I'll be offering at this conference. I have some built to last DVDs, just some. It's the last box. There's not a lot of them left. This is the Khan's Palm. This was reviewed a couple weeks ago on uh, Magic Orthodoxy. We have these available again. They're now two for $15. If you got one at 10 bucks, congratulations. They're now two for 15 bucks. Uh, this is my new book. Everyone says, Doug, when are you going to write a new book? Well, I wrote it. Here it is. It's called Advice from a Con Man. Concerning street performing, prestidigitation, and social media magic. So yeah, that's the book. And these are my digital notes for the uh, SAM. I'm done. I'm done printing bunches of paper and wasting trees and carrying around 50 pounds of weight and having to charge $30 to, you know, do so. So uh, we're moving forward with this format. And inside here, the purchaser will get some crypt notes, uh, a QR code with links, some other secret things. The notes include videos, video files, seven of those, and two manuscripts, my Trick Talk manuscript. And uh, do I have them here? This is one of them. This is in there. Concerning content for sleight of hand on social media and then my concrete, which is uh, street performing uh, notes. Hey, Tom Britton. Man, we're doing well today. Maybe I don't have to go work this convention this weekend. I can just sit on the YouTube lives and, co and collect the collect the kindred spirits donos. <laughs> Yay, the book is out. The hype is real. Trick traveler for the wind. All right, so look. <clears throat> today we're going to break down some of this information that I'm going to de deliver at the lecture and one live viewer at the end of this 10-minute fiesta. 10 minutes, that's all it's going to be, is going to win that prize package. The DVD set, the trick... Trick Traveler, Cons Bomb, and the new set of notes. Uh, coming to someone in the North American Hemisphere. Let me rephrase this. If you win and you're an international viewer on this time, and maybe this time only, you're going to pay the postage uh, just because, wow, I'm like paying $40 for international shipping. is stupid. To send $40 of stuff, it's $40. It's dumb. 
All right, but look what I did here. I prepared, I prepared slides. It's a Google slideshow, folks. How am I, how am I going to be happy? This is how we're going to be happy. Ladies and gentlemen of the interwebs, I present to you my 10-minute, hold on. I'll pause every time. We could do this all together at the end, or I'll just keep saying thanks. I'll say it again. That's a double dip for CJ. We appreciate your support of the vanishing arts. Uh, T1, do I give a long version of this lecture? I do at magic clubs. Like when I'm at a magic club, I'll go two or three hours. It could go longer. At a convention, it's an hour to an hour and a half. Today, it's going to be about 10 minutes because, you know, honestly, if you want the real value, come to the SAM and get the full show. You'll get the tricks. You'll get all the tips. You'll get all the tricks. And that's why they charge the big bucks for you to show up. All right, so here's what we're going to talk about today. Advice from a con man concerning street performing and social media magic. And hey, Alex, I'm good. All right, street performing and social media magic, subject number one, concrete, attempting my, to use my name in as many puns as humanly possible. It is my quest in life. Thank you for abiding this quest. So this is me about three years ago, pre-pandemic. I'm on the corner of St. Anne and Chartres in Jackson Square, Louisiana. I counted the heads earlier in this picture. There's about 30. That's half my audience. There's probably about 60 people watching me that day. It's probably a $20 or $30 show. I do five or 10 of those a day. And uh, that's how that spot works out on that corner. <clears throat> it's a small show, 12 minutes. This is the style I'm working these days. All right, Robert, I will put you under consideration for that pun. Oh, I can see where this is going. All right, then. <laughs> oh, I hit buttons. Hit that button. All right, so topic number one. You want to be a good street performer? You want to be a good street performer, huh? You want to do that? Here's what you need, folks. <laughs> Here's another one. Oh, my. Confidence. Let me be clear about this. You can be horrible at your art or your craft. Some street performers do nothing. You know, they're, they're, they're just aggressive talkers, more or less. If you are conf confident about your pursuits in a public forum, you'll get paid. That's the bottom line. So if you want to be a street performer, uh, well, yeah, do that. Have confidence. They unshared. I got to go back to what I was sharing. Hold on. Sorry, folks. I misclicked. <clears throat> we want this on here. All right. So you have conf You want confidence. Now it's easy to say have confidence. How do you get confidence? Well, some people are naturally born with it. I'm watching this. I'm distracted by all the convoluted comments in, in the stream. Uh, here's how you get it. Here's how you get confidence. You get your act together. And when I say get your act together, I mean you get, get an act. You got to have an act. And once you have this act and it's together and you've presented it a few times, you will become confident in this process. Now, there's a few things that you can do to make this more of a success than just repeating them. And here is the quick list. And I think each of these subjects we could talk 10 minutes on. I could talk an hour on each one of them on a different day. It won't be this day. But here's a couple of sentences on each of these topics. Number one, a good bally. A bally is something that you use to draw attention. You know, a little looky-loo. You know, hey folks, showtime. You could just stand there and yell that. That's a bally. But you want a good one, right? You want something, you know. Hey, folks, watch this trick. I'll send you down the street talking to yourself. Just like I do in the morning before the coffee. That's, that's a Jimmy talks a lot bally line. There's a lot of them, but you want something to say to get someone's attention. If you don't know what you're going to say, then your act's not together and you're not going to be confident. So get a good bally. There's a couple of ways you can go about this. Sound, movement, color. These are lessons from my uh, mentor, Jim Cellini. <laughs> Hold on. Can we hear it for the new shirt? 
This is draft number one of the Busker shirt, by the way. These are the masters. These are the five, the five families. Sheridan and Salzar and Cellini and Gazzo and Fox. If I miss someone and you think they should be on this shirt, let me know. Maybe they'll make it into the final, into the final form. But yeah, my mentor, Cellini, the most important of these sound movement and color is the sound factor. Sometimes my microphone mutes the loud sounds, but this is the one I currently use. It's a Moscow mule mug, which I'll often use in magic tricks. I do a coins the glass routine that I'll be teaching. I, I've taught it on YouTube. You can go look it up. But uh, use a whistle. Use a cowbell. Just tap your stick on the table. Sound is the best. Hey, there's the man himself. Jimmy talks lots in the house, y'all. Everyone say hello to Jimmy. And look who popped in as well. Gary, what's happening? Yeah, but hey, uh, if y'all are watching this after the stream, if you have suggestions for the shirt, let me know. These will be available, and I'm going to make a little fund as well for any profits of these shirts to go to Gazzo. Uh, he's been, you know, if you haven't heard, Gazzo's a little struggling these days, and we're going to, you know, whatever profits I can uh, eke out from these shirt sales will go to him. <clears throat> but yeah, sound, movement, color, sound being optimal. If you can move around and interact with your audience and, you know, present a sense of bravado with your costuming, these will all be things that will help your ballet be a little stronger and put you on a, a little closer path to being confident about getting your act together. Uh, you'll want a quick opener to get attention. This is exactly why I pulled out this handkerchief earlier. I'm going to say you could even do this trick. I still do it. Been doing it 30 years. And when I'm trying to get the attention of a family audience, it is this trick that I use. That's the red side. That's the clear side. Yeah, it's clear on the back, you see, until I snap my fingers, and that's the red side. And this works because I just uh, pretend to poke it in. Yeah, I pretend. <laughs> yeah, that's the clear side. And uh, that's the red. And that's the invisible, visible handkerchief. Quick, fast. I don't, I, let me say this. Let me say this as well. When, when I start the first effect, this is such a big problem with beginners. I don't ask people if they want to see the magic. I don't say, hey, do you want to see a trick? Hey, do you like magic? Would you like to see it? No. Hey, watch this. That's the red side. That's the clear side. Right away, I just, boom, 10 seconds in, if they give me their attention, right off the bat, quick opener. You know, I, I can also mention this. I follow up, I follow up this quite often with this trick. The invisible deck. The invisible deck. One of the fine offerings at conjure.com. So here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. So I'm in this shtick where I say, yeah, it, I just pretend to poke it in, but it's really this. It's red on the front, but the back of the handkerchief here, this is the clear side. That's the clear side on the back. And that's the red, that's the red side on the front. I say, look, I have the same thing in playing card form. Yeah, same thing with cards. And I go right away into the invisible deck. So they see a, a quick visual. And then I say, look, I have the same thing in card form. You can see the cards on the front, but from the back of the, from the back of the, they're complete, they're completely naked to the invisible eye. Here, pick an invisible card. And then I have my spectator pick an invisible card. They name one. We're going to have Siri just, hey, Siri, pick a card. Choosing. It's the seven of hearts this time. The seven of hearts. And then whatever card the spectator names is discovered to be the only card that is, yeah, there is one card upside down. There's one from my last TikTok live. <laughs> And that is the seven of hearts. I did not even check this deck before the stream. There's a card out of place. There are. There were two cards out of place in this invisible deck. Let's do that again just to make sure. <clears throat> hey Siri, pick a card. Choosing. It's the Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades, the least impressive card in the deck. I generally avoid that card when doing this trick, but we go through the deck, you'll see one card and only one card because we pre-checked it this time and it's the Ace of Spades. 
Uh, my favorite card trick, and I do actually use the invisible deck more than once in the same show. I bring this thing back out during a multiple selection routine later on in the show, but no one is aware of it. I also don't always do the silk to card trick because this. Sometimes the card trick is not appropriate for the people in front of me. And sometimes I'm more interested in going into a bigger crowd draw. I'm, I'm more likely to do the card trick if it's like a slow day and I'm working a trickle pitch for like three people or six people, have a more intimate experience. And if I'm trying to get a bigger crowd of like the 50 or 60 people, I'll probably bring the rings out right away as opposed to going into a closer up effect. So yeah, that's how I use the invisible deck and the silk vanish. Quick openers, hits them right in, in, in the noggin. And you know the, the goal here is to keep your initial core audience uh, with you. You know, if you can really get those first few people to lock in, the chances of success are stronger. There's Samuel Osborne. Hey, Doug. J <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. Doug is the best tree performing teacher. Oh, I thought you were talking about Jimmy. I don't know. I, I thought you were saying Jimmy's the best. But look, Samuel's out there living the dream right now. 17, I think, working Covent Garden, uh, you know, started in the uh, convent. <laughs> I don't know, I'm struggling here. Uh, yeah, it's a trickle pitch. So in this a trickle pitch, if you're not familiar, is where I might just leave my hat out. And I don't do a, a hat pitch at the end, but I'll just leave the hat out and do a few tricks at a time and collect money. And I really don't stop doing magic when I'm working that style. All right, so if we get a quick opener. We want a dramatic middle. And this is going to be flexible for the performer. For some people, a dramatic middle is going to be 45 minutes, even on the street. You know, I've seen guys like just drag it out. I don't think a street show needs to be that long, but it can be. And along the way, however dramatic your middle is, whether you've borrowed a bill and burned it or, you know, someone's lost their watch or you have a child on stage with you and something interesting's happening, uh, whatever is happening, you probably want to use audience, audience interaction throughout these uh events. You want your audience clapping and cheering. I certainly want them laughing. Use, use humor as much as you can. And you definitely want to use humor when you're uh, asking for money. And, it, and you don't have to go out there to make money when you're street performing. I do want to make this clear. I want to make this clear because it gets, you know, street performing does not have to be about money. You can just go out there and do your art and get better at it. And if you want to make money, that will come. That comes usually after a year or two of suffering on the street. It's, it's a struggle. But if you want to make the money, you're going to have to develop a way to ask for it. If you can have people laughing, you're going to want to insinuate what kind of money you want them to give you. You know, if you want to get 20s, ask for 20s. And again, we can talk about each of these subjects for an hour. But that's part one of the mini lecture. There's my street performing tips for the noobs and maybe the intermediates. And, uh, oh man, the Connecticut subtlety, huh, Gary? All right. And that's the, that's the street performing. All right, let's go on to some, some thoughts on social media. So you want to be a social media magician, huh? Well, well, here is concerning content for short form video consumption. I think that's all the puns. So look. My hat pitch took me over a year to get good. So worth it, though. But look, Sam, here's what you're going to say next year. You're going to say, my hat pitch took me two years to get good, but it's getting good now. <laughs> oh, man. Here's what we're going to do. That. Phoenix. No demerits for you, young man. We're having lessons. You can catch up later. Today, we're talking about street performing and social media magic. Here's my notes on this stuff. It's kind of similar, actually, to street performing. And I think that's one of the reasons I was able to garner the success I've had between TikTok and YouTube and Instagram. We're over a million followers. <clears throat> Here's the big three. Like, if you need to know three things, and what well, you really need to know about a thousand to make all these things work, or at least a hundred. I talk about a couple dozen of them in the notes, but here's three of them. Hook your audience. 
Now, unlike the streets where you might have 10 seconds or a minute or two minutes, in short form video, you have two seconds. And that's probably an overestimate. So like, you know, you're going to, you know, you don't have a chance to say, hi, folks, my name's Doug and I do magic. By the time you say, hi, folks, my name is, they scroll. So right off the bat, uh, you know, give them something interesting to think about. Now, if, if you're doing this, you better have good lighting and audio, because if you don't, if you don't have good lighting, they'll scroll before you even get your mouth open. And likewise, if you open your mouth and the audio sucks, they'll scroll then. So have good lighting and good audio or all of this is futile. These can be attained relatively cheaply these days. You know, I'm talking, you know, you get a good cell phone, you're probably all right. Maybe spend another 50, 100 bucks on lighting, perhaps an external microphone. I've never used one on my, you know, I use, I use the iPhone for 90% of my short form content. So, so there's that. And the last one, and boy, this is really the important one, directly engage the viewer. Actually, this isn't the last one. I have a follow-up on the next page that has all the really important stuff. It all connects to all of this, really. But uh, directly engage the viewer. You know, you do this for someone that has a brain. Don't do it for yourself. Keep in mind the person on the other end of the camera. Address them like a person like I'm addressing you right now. And I'm using the word you because when you say you, people, uh, you know, they know this phrase. And they say, hey, you, and they go, what? And now if you can get a good hook and good lighting and good audio and engage your viewer directly, maybe now you have a chance to present your magic trick. But only if you get these three things right. So do all that and then do these things. Give your audience a reason to care. Look, this, this page, do this for all your magic. Street performing, stage, close-up, children's magic. You know, uh, the, these are... It's a short list, but it's a list. Give your audience a reason to care. Can they appreciate the effect? Does it make sense in their world? Or does it take two minutes to do the at fist before you separate the jacks and the aces and start your demonstration? I don't know. Why do they care about that? You could use storytelling. This something that I, it's like on the top of my to-do list right now is get better at storytelling. I feel if I can do this, this is where I level up. So what, what is interesting in Doug Kahn's world, world right now? Becoming a better storyteller. Again, it could be hours. We're almost to the half hour point. You guys know I like to keep it at about that. I got a prize to give away. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to relax. I'm not going to uh, ramble. Although I could, it seems like the chat's still working on getting the, uh, connections together be relatable all right it's pretty pretty easy easy you know i think you could be yourself or an extension of yourself or you could be mean or you could be grotesque but be something that people can relate to right a point of view that's what i should have put there have a strong point of view that's the way i like to sum it up conflict and drama you know have a conflict resolve it this is a good way to make an audience care and lastly, if you can deliver a benefit, deliver a benefit. Entertainment's often enough with magic. You're giving people a smile, a sense of astonishment, maybe a joke. But beyond that, if you can move their soul or teach them something, that will maybe make everything work better in your social media experience. It's one of the things I'm trying to do today, deliver a benefit. That's the last slide. I hope I accomplished that goal in uh, some of those summations and maybe five years from now when I'm watching the next mega street performer or social media magician collecting millions of views and thousands and thousands of followers that they say, yeah, I saw this Doug Kahn live back in 2023 and I started following some of the things he said and it made all the difference. Yeah. All right. Let's give away a prize, folks. Let's get up the prize package here. And if you don't win the prize, by the way, I do like to mention, you could always consider, uh, uh, what can you consider? <laughs> you could go over here to conjure.com. This is a good option for you. In addition to uh, my, my online magic stuff, my shop, and there's the built the last package. 
That's the, I've only got a handful of these. Uh, I've got five of these for sale. Until the convention's over, there won't be more listed. I, I have a handful of DVDs left. I want to make sure I have enough for the convention. So you can go here and shop. No, you could also go here and learn. I have everything curated over here. Go learn some intermediate card tricks if that's up. That's what you're interested in today. And uh, that's what's happening over there at conjure.com. And we thank you for your attention on this website as well as the money you spend with us there. All right. And with that, we can bring up the StreamYard giveaway tool now. And one lucky viewer will get this giveaway package. All right. Let me go here. Well, you know what the word's got to be. Let's go con all caps. Con all caps. And... I'm not doing multiple draws. Wow, do we already have 11 entries? Is that right? That was quick. You know, I was planning to leave some time today for questions and so on. And of course, I'm always happy to field any of those. But if you have any questions that, you know, you'd like to ask about any of the material we covered today. I was also going to go over a little sleight of hand coin magic, but maybe we'll save that for the next time. Contagious. Huh. All right. I see you, John Prentice. Uh, speaking of next time, the Society of American Magicians Convention is four, it's five days for me because I'm doing something for the Society of Young, Ma Young Magicians Saturday morning. And if you are in the SYM, I look forward to meeting you on Saturday. We're going to have a nice chat. And, uh, but the point is I'll be at the hotel Wednesday. So there will not be a live next week. Maybe we'll do a recap on Friday or Saturday. Once I'm over the jet lag of a four or five day magic affair. And, uh, I'll give you all the heads up on what happened. Hopefully I'll get some shorts filmed. Maybe we get some, uh, content from the convention, you know, go see the dealer's room, see what some of the other magicians are up to. And, uh, that'll be happening this weekend. I'm excited to go do it. All right. I think if uh, if you wanted to get in, you've gotten in. Let's pick a winner for this. And again, North American, I got you. International, you got to pay the shipping on this deal. I don't know. This can this, no. It, it can't go media mail either. It can't. Probably about 15, 20 bucks to ship this. Oh my. Let's just do it. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. And three, two, one. Dun, 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 dun. Notch name. Notch name. Well, you know what I'm happy about here? We get to give away a prize to a new face, a new notch name. And for you to claim this prize, notch name, I'll need your actual name over at this email address. Conjure at conjure.com. It's down there right below me. Send me an email. Send me your mailing address. And if you're an international... Send me 20 bucks. I'll get this package in the mail to you. And yes, congratulations. Congrats, 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 congrats. Con. Why is no one? There it is. There we go. Alfie got it. Congrats. Whee. All right. We did it, folks. Another live magic experience from the con cave. Oh. Yes. All right. I guess before the chat gets out of hand with the conflicts and the in the sh in the shots, I'm going to get to stepping and continue my preparation for this weekend's festivities. I know I'm going to see Robert. I hope to see some other kindred spirits here in New Orleans for the so Society of American Magicians Convention. And uh, keep an eye on the community tab, and you'll know when you'll see me next going to be a chow for now y'all and thanks again to everyone and and congratulations notch name au revoir mon ami chow for now